You are so close, so close to closing the deal and you know that you need this sale. And then it happens, that last minute objection and it's a big one. Don't get worried because knowing how to handle these objections, these last minute curveballs, not only will keep you from losing the sale, it actually gives you a chance to strengthen your relationship with your prospect. How can handling objections strengthen my relationship with a prospect or with a client? The answer is because you're playing the long game. Because we need to build trust, we need to build credibility, and to do so, we have to have an understanding of what the person's feeling and what they're thinking and what they're worried about. And the problem is most consumers, most prospects, most clients won't ever tell you that. And so when you're in a sales conversation and someone gives you an objection, that's a little window that's a little piece of insight. That's a little slice into how they're feeling and what they're thinking. And so knowing that better arms you to lead them through the process. The more objections you get, the more insight you get, the more understanding you have about who you're speaking to, the better off you actually are in getting the yes or getting the no. We don't want maybes. And so the objections that we're getting hit with will help us understand how to help the person more, get them to that yes, or it'll make it super clear that this is a no, in which case, you can send them on their way. You don't wanna give them something that they don't need, something that's not right for them. And so getting to that no is just as good, but that only comes from being able to handle these objections. So here are five ways to not only know how to handle the objection, but to actually fall in love with them. Number one, you have to listen. Nothing is more frustrating when you thought it was gonna go well and it doesn't go well, but you have to stop and you have to listen. Be patient. Don't get thrown off your game. Don't try to regain control, but actually stop and listen because this is an opportunity for you to learn more about the real situation so you can handle it. So don't make them feel like you're just dismissing it or setting aside. It's also not about fixing the problem or their concern right away. Fixing things is an action and right now we're only listening. It's about making them feel heard and understood. Number two, dig deeper into the objection. Part of being able to help them, help them with their problem, their challenge, their concern, being able to overcome the objection is ensuring that you really understand it. So try to get a good understanding of their actual concern. Clarify their point, give their language back to them, and then have them agree that you actually understand it. This will not only help them feel heard, it'll put you on an even playing field where they start to turn to you as a trusted advisor. Number three, identify the real problem. In most cases, the problem isn't the real problem, right? What we're saying isn't really what's going on. We're being polite, we're being shallow. We don't wanna to reveal too much. So the question you have to ask yourself is what is the problem when the problem they're giving you isn't the real problem? And so you wanna maybe be polite and not push too hard, but it makes sense to me to start to challenge some of these preconceived notions or start to dig a little bit deeper, start to play around the edges and say, you know, help me understand. You know, you're saying this, and I understand that this is the problem, but why is this a problem? Why is this even an issue? Help me understand the backstory so that way I can help you arrive at a solution. Recognize that the challenge they're giving you and the problem they're giving you, in most cases, isn't the real thing. And if you wanna be able to help them and overcome this, you actually have to get to the real thing. Number four, take some time. Don't rush the process. Take some time, and that can be time in this meeting, or it can be time over the course of multiple meetings, people move through sales process at their speed, not yours. And so some people are willing to move really quick and others need more time. Some people who seemed like they were gonna move quick suddenly give you an objection that has to be handled and it takes more time. So give it time because their challenge is a challenge in their mind, even if it's silly to you, even if it's simple to you, even if you've overcome this challenge tons and tons of time, give them the feeling that you respect the fact that this is a real challenge and give them the time that they need to move through it. So consider what you can do, help brainstorm some outcomes, make it feel like you're not glossing over this, that you're giving the time and the respect that it needs so that way when we arrive at a solution, they feel that it's actually properly considered, that you've taken everything into account and you didn't just rush through it to get the sale. And number five, offer an unbiased solution. Nothing will kill your credibility more than if it's perceived that you're offering the solution that's best for you and not for them. You know, like the old saying, 
if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? What they're saying is, if you only have one tool in your back pocket, you're gonna pull that one tool out for everything. And I see this all the time with marketers, right? I'm a social media expert. What do you think the answer is to their business problems? Social media, right? We run a video production agency. What's the answer? You need video. Right? Like we, we see this in all industries. People pull out the tool. They think that the tool they have is the answer for everything. But sometimes the tool you have is not the answer and that's okay. So you need to put yourself in a position through all of these steps so that way you can actually provide honest and transparent and unbiased advice because we're playing the long game and in the long game, I would much rather send someone off so that way they can circle back around later when the opportunity actually aligns than try and squeeze them into something that's 60% there. So here's some language that I use. I say, you know what, I, I'm, a, I'm a business owner as well. If it were me, I would want two or three solutions like X, Y, and Z, and I would probably move forward with this for this reason, but it's your choice. Or if you wanna trial close someone, you might say, you know what, if, if we were able to do this and this, do you think it would put us in a better position to be able to move forward then? Like if this is really all that's holding us up and we figured out a way to be able to do this and this, we would be able to move forward then, right? In each of these situations, I'm putting forward what I think is best for them, what I would do in their situation if I were in their shoes, and each one of them includes me or doesn't include me, but the choice is theirs. And that protects my credibility. That means that I'm not tarnishing my relationship by quickly moving into a sales mode when at the end of the day, all I wanna do is help them out. Whether that's a yes, awesome, we got the deal, or whether that's a no, which is fine, hopefully it's a no for now and it'll be a yes in the future, we're just trying to move out of the land of maybes because maybes kill us. They waste our time. They waste our efforts. They give us false hope. So remember, objections are the best. Don't get scared. Don't get worried. Don't get angry. This gives us the insight we need to strengthen our relationship, understand the prospect, the client, or the consumer more, and put ourselves in a position where we're actually offering real advice. The more you do this, the more you'll come to understand there are only six to 10 objections that people give you. It comes in different flavors, but it's always the same problems. And you'll come to understand how to overcome these objections and what the answer is. And you'll start to gain more confidence because you know that you can work around it and deliver on it. And so it's like a muscle memory. The more you do, the more you'll hear it, the more you'll come to understand exactly how to overcome it. But follow these steps still. Even if you have the answer, listen. Don't rush the process. Give things time. Make sure the person is heard. All of those things are important so that way you can actually strengthen the relationship with your prospect, customer, consumer, whomever you're speaking to. Learn how to overcome the objections. Learn to love them because you know you can handle them. It'll help you build more confidence. It'll help you strengthen your close rate. And more than anything, you will be the trusted advisor that you set out to be. Do I look okay sitting like this and talking like this? Or is it just way too Don Draper? If you are looking for more sales tips to become a pro, check out this video right here. I think you'd like it a lot. And it would mean the world to me if you subscribe to my channel.